everyone. Welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf, and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a furry friend of ours because we are covering the oh so wonderful jumping spider. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Marcus, Sarah, Fred, and Natalie. Thank you for taking the time to send in your request, and I hope you enjoy your very own episode. To send in your animal request, you can do so by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and going to the Animal Request tab. If you would like access to exclusive episodes every week, and the ability to vote on new episodes once a month, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts and get access to many extra hours of Relax With Animal Facts for under a cup of coffee a month. The nature ambiance used in this episode is courtesy of George Vlad, and I have linked his YouTube in the description, and I encourage all of you to go check him out. And now we are going to begin to slow down a little bit. If you are listening for the first time, welcome. I am so glad you are joining me. If you are already a frequent listener, you know what I am going to ask of you. I have three primary exhortations for you. The first thing I ask is that you put on your favorite running or hiking shoes. We are certainly going to need those for where we are going today. And the second thing I encourage you to do is to realize perhaps where you are carrying some tension. If this is not immediately obvious to you, you can start from the bottom of your feet and make your way up to the head, checking, am I tensing my legs, my arms, my shoulders, my neck? And this is a good way of making sure that we don't miss anything. It can be a challenge to relax when we are stiff as a board. And my final exhortation to you is to give your mind permission to wander and journey with me into a Canadian woodland where the jumping spider resides. I am always happy that I do not need to travel a lot when we are going into the woodlands of Canada. For those of you listening from the United States, from the UK, from Australia, this can be quite a hike, but here we are. It is funny that Canadians are often credited as being especially well-mannered, polite, and forgiving, but Canada also has some of the most unforgiving habitats as far as climate is concerned. But today, we don't really have to worry about that very much. We are in a woodland today, a place that is familiar to many of you, I'm sure, and we are looking for a jumping spider. And right off of the bat, we ought to know that there are more than 5,000 species of jumping spider. As we have often done on the show, there is a lot of value in covering the more general before looking at the very specific species and subspecies. And what links all of these more than 5,000 species of jumping spider are, of course, their ability to jump and pounce onto their prey. The largest jumping spider can be 10 times the size of the smallest one. They will range from between 2 to 22 millimeters, which is 0.08 to 0.87 inches. But it is also worthy of note that the majority of them are small to medium sized. And of course, not all of these 5,000 species are going to be here where we are today. They are very common in tropical regions, and also some will live in northern and even arctic regions. And while at the top of the show we said that they are a furry friend of ours, they are more accurately to be described as our hairy friends. And just on a purely semantic basis, it is an interesting question to ask what the difference is between furry and hairy. It seems strange to call an elephant furry, and it seems odd to call a dog hairy. That is because in general, fur is used to describe something that is dense and thick. 
And so when we use the adjective furry, it is typically describing something that has very thick and dense hair. But when we use hairy, it often describes something that is covered in coarse and sparse hair. It is not as thick or dense. And so that is why it sounds more right to call elephants hairy rather than furry. And the jumping spider is better described as hairy rather than furry. Some of the species that we will see here in the woodlands of Canada might well be hairy. But keep in mind that there are many other species of jumping spiders that are very sparsely haired. All jumping spiders are part of a group or family called Salticidae. This family name is very well suited to the creatures within it. That name, Salticidae, comes from a Latin word, and in its infinitive form, saltare, it means to jump, leap, or dance. And so these are spiders that love to jump, leap, and perhaps sometimes dance. Jumping spiders actually make up the largest family of spiders in the whole world. They are found in just about every habitat that the planet has to offer. The only way to escape the company of the jumping spider, if you wanted to, would be to go to Antarctica. And so let's look at their physiology or anatomy. Now, it is a fair assumption, given the distance and speed at which they can jump, that they have the spider version of Arnold Schwarzenegger legs. But that is not exactly the case. The reason they can jump 50 times their own body length is not due to an extraordinary mass of muscle, but it relies on a different kind of physics. These spiders generate a kind of pressure called hemolymph pressure. They have segmented legs and of course blood flows through them. And so what they do as they are preparing to jump, they will cause an extreme change in this pressure by contracting the muscles that they do have in the upper regions of their bodies and by so doing, forcing blood into their legs and causing their legs to extend at a rapid pace. These little physicists, by messing with this pressure, allow their legs to extend quickly and very suddenly, propelling them in the direction that they want to go. And so the muscles in their legs are less like the dynamite and more like the rope that attaches to it. It is actually that hemolymph pressure that is the dynamite. The muscles are the ignition and the pressure change is the engine. Now, given the relative size of the jumping spider, if you were to look at the distances they are jumping, it might not look like much to us. But these jumps can be monumental, and it is also important that they do not miss their target or fall onto the ground. And in order to ensure they have a safe landing, they will spin themselves a line of silk that they use as a drag line. It basically allows them to adjust their body for a smooth landing. They will take advantage of the tension that is in the silk and use it for direction and stability for their landing. It can also act like a safety net if they need to stop in the middle of a jump. These little spinsters are like mini acrobats. And you may have noticed one thing that differentiates jumping spiders from the majority of other spiders that may come to mind. Many of these jumping spiders won't use webs to hunt. The common depiction of a spider hunting is often that of a spider lying in wait on a prepared web. As an insect is flying around, it gets caught in the web and the spider has lunch. But the jumping spider easily jumps and catches their prey, a style of hunting that is shared among many other creatures that are not small insects. They do not need to string a web because they are go-getters. They will find a target, line themselves up, and use their muscle and the laws of physics regarding pressure to launch after their meal. These spiders also have venom. While they are venomous, they are not venomous to the point of being dangerous to humans. It will, however, be very effective in catching other little insect prey. One other amazing aspect about jumping spiders are their eyesight. 
If you Google jumping spider eyes, you might come upon some very interesting images. Their eyes almost look like camera lenses. There are two larger eyes in the middle of their head and two smaller eyes that are in the top corners of those other two eyes. Now all jumping spiders have eight eyes in three rows, but what we are talking about is the front row of four eyes. And with these four eyes, they get some seriously good eyesight. The two smaller eyes that are on the outside of the bigger ones actually give them a wide angle view and give them a sense of motion. But those two in the middle, sandwiched between those wide angle lenses, give them an enormous amount of detail in color and spatial acuity, especially of animals that are relative to their body size. Their eyes are naturally an apparatus that is something we could only dream of recreating with sophisticated cameras, the wonders and glories of nature. And it might not be an intuitive fact given how they look or how we conceive of them, but they also hear very well. Now they do not have the traditional eardrums or ears as we have, but these creatures being hairy are not hairy just for vanity. They have sensory hairs all along their body that are used to detect vibrations of sound waves. Sound carries with it vibrations, and so they can hear just in a different way than we do. And it turns out that these hairs are very sensitive and allow them to detect sound waves from very far away. Now we learned that the family name of Salticidae comes from a Latin root that means to jump, to leap, and to dance. And it is a fact that many of these spider species are great singers and dancers. The males will do their absolute best to impress the female with their dance moves. They will wriggle around and do their little thing, all while singing their own special song. They will click, they will scrape, buzz, and tap to a nearby female. And as we learned, all of these sounds can be detected by their very sensitive sensory hairs. Now, while this may seem very cute and charming, and it definitely is in one way, there is an important aspect of this yet to be mentioned. This dancing routine is a dance for the male's life. If they dance and the female is unimpressed, they will just wander on over and devour the male. And so if there was a TV show for these little spider dances, it wouldn't be called American Idol or So You Think You Can Dance. I imagine it would be called Dance For Your Life. And there are also some jumping spiders that take this courtship ritual to the next level. There is a species called the peacock spider, and this is a species of jumping spider found in Australia. And this creature has colorful peacock-like fan extensions. They will be sending those same kind of vibrations and dance moves to the female, but they will add in that extraordinary color pattern as well. And remember that those two big eyes that both the females and the males have can take in an extraordinary amount of color and detail. And so if we can enjoy the beauty of it, I am sure the female spiders can as well. And so these spiders are carnivorous. They will eat small insects and other spiders that are their size or perhaps smaller. And when the females lay eggs, they will lay more than 100. And they will protect these eggs with a special cocoon of webbing all the way up until they hatch. And now let us move on to the name of the animal. What does it mean or where does it come from? Now it is likely very obvious as to why they are called jumping spiders at this point, but let's cover the word spider. Where does it come from? The word spider as we know it now was used as early as the late 14th century. And it comes from Old English, from Proto-Germanic, and it goes back something like this. From spider, to spitter, to the Old English word spidra, to the Proto-Germanic word spinthron. And etymologically, the word spinner is from the Proto-Indo-European root word spen, which means to draw, stretch, or spin. 
And so spiders are spinners, effectively. They spin their webs in intricate patterns, or in the case of the jumping spider, they spin their webs for a different reason, but that is really cool nonetheless. And now let us go to the review portion of the episode. This review was written by Izzy, and Izzy wrote all the way from the United States of America. Izzy writes, I love this podcast so much. My favorite episode is the horse episode, but you mostly talked about the English riding. I would like to know about rodeo sports and breeds for horses. You are the best. Can you consider saying a joke at the end of each upcoming episode? Thank you, Izzy, for taking the time to write that wonderful review. I am so happy that you love the podcast as you do and that you join me every week. The horse episode was definitely a fun one, and there are many specific breeds that we are yet to cover. Maybe adding a joke at the end of the show is a good idea, but given my personality, I will only tell dad jokes. And so, Izzy, this dad joke is for you. What do you call it when you have too many spiders in your house? A no-fly zone. And now that half of you have turned off the podcast, we can continue on. If you would like to request an animal for the show, you can do so by going to relaxwithanimalfacts.com and clicking on the Animal Request tab. To reach out to me for any other reason, you can send an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com or you can go to the Instagram relaxwithanimalfacts and send a message there. To help Relax With Animal Facts in its aim of inspiring curiosity and wonder for the natural world, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts and become a patron. There is no obligation, you can cancel at any time, there is even a free trial. I have tried to make it as accessible to as many of you as possible. A huge thank you to George Vlad, who is the one who recorded the ambiance in this episode. I have linked his YouTube in the description and I encourage you to check him out. The facts in this episode are courtesy of pestworld.org, britannica.com, entomology.wsu.edu, treehugger.com, livescience.com, and etimonline.com. All of those resources are in the description for your exploration. What an amazing creature we have covered today. It is just amazing to me how something so small can house such an intricate set of characteristics. These are acrobats, these are physicists, these are creatures equipped with IMAX cameras for eyes. They are simply oh so wonderful. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to having you join me again on the next episode with the next animal. Take care.